Hey everybody, wanted to shoot a quick video here of our newest heat source for the in-floor heat systems. This is a TIS Pellet 20 Duo. It's actually a pellet boiler. Uh, anybody with radiant floor heating or anyone that follows it will know once you do have a water-based heat system, you really have a lot of options on how you'd like to heat that water. For this uh, current project, we're in my own home and we're finishing off the basement. Currently the home heats about 2,600 square foot and whenever we add in this basement space, it's gonna be about another 2,000. And we're just trying to keep the heating and cooling costs down, uh, mainly in the winter when it drops below about zero degrees. That's when you really get a large load on the heat system and that's when I wanted to turn on the pellet boiler just to take it easy on our current heating system that's gone through a lot of changes. We'll be redoing this panel here at some point. And right now it's heated by two tankless water heaters. And that pretty much could handle the whole load of the house. Uh, because of startup times, usually when the heat first turns on, it's gonna have both of them kick on and eventually after the water's up about 30, 40 degrees, it drops back to the single boiler. Uh, those boilers are rated at about 110,000 BTUs. This one here is rated at 27,000 to 68,000 BTU. And there's a lot of reasons why I chose this particular unit. Mainly was the fact that it can burn pellets. It also has a middle chamber there that you could manually burn logs if, if you really wanted to. And you're not really restricted to just pellets, <clears throat> although that's what I'm mainly going to be using. Uh, but you can use just about any other biomass. I don't know a lot about burning biomass in place of pellets, uh, but corn and corn cobs, certain kinds of nutshells, all seem to be types of biomass that are popular in other areas. Um, I want a pretty much automated system here. So I just chose a pellet for now that I could get locally at a Home Depot or Lowe's. And it, I believe the brand was called Stove Chow. Uh, this hopper here, <clears throat> it holds nine 40 pound bags. Uh, I've only gave it one test run. Uh, you can see it'll, it's going to hold a lot. I went through about a bag and a half testing and getting my burn rate right. But it really was about good from the factory. I did turn it down just to kind of get a baseline of how hot this thing was going to get and how much work I could get out of it. Uh, my first test run, I was able to get about a 45 degree water temperature rise i was going from somewhere about 90 to about 130 140 at times uh, and i think that it has more potential so i'm waiting for another time to give it another test run and and really seal it off so uh, as of now i have it pretty much installed there's a couple other things i want to add to it but I, I do have it safely installed. I opted not to put the control panel on the unit itself. Uh, this basement will be finished off, so it's kind of going to be in a closet, a closed off area here. There's my control panel. Uh, it is a 220 volt panel, so you will need to run 220 to this th thing. Uh, they do sell converters that can take your 110 to 220 to support this, but kind of another fail point. So I just chose to run a fresh line. Also, our new panel board was right there, so it wasn't too difficult for me. Now, <clears throat> a couple reasons I did go with this brand, even though it is uh, from Europe, I do believe, is it's pretty much one of the only automated ones that you can run inside your home. Uh, there's a lot of serious outdoor units 
You, they start right around 6,000. This thing was a little less than half of that. And these outdoor units, they're, they're good to set and forget, but they're also designed to be your primary heat source. And that's not necessarily the case for us. We're, we're mainly going to stick with the gas. And when we know it's going to get really cold, I'm going to come down and flip on the unit. And because I already have an existing control panel, uh, it's basically going to get the thermostat signal. We have eight different zones in this house. And when either any of them call, not only is it going to turn up our gas heaters, it's going to turn this device on. The water is going to come through here first. And if it doesn't get to our target temperature, the gas heaters will pick it up from there. And depending on your settings, you may be able to get up to target temperature right off the bat with this. Uh, with the 40 degree or so rise that I got with it, it's pretty promising because the other heaters I have, their max is about 30, 35 degrees. And after that, they start restricting the flow of the water to get to the target temp. But these units, they're just going to put the water out at whatever temperature that it got it to. So it won't be doing any restricting in that sense. Anyhow, aside the fact from being able to run it inside my home, as you can see, we're down in the basement. Uh, it also isn't like commercial grade oriented. A lot of the other ones are a little smoky and a, a little bit large and not exactly something you would want running in a finished space. I do think as a precautionary, I might throw in a six inch vent above this unit just to catch any secondary smoke. But once I cycled the burn process and got it to light accurately, really couldn't smell any smoke other than down in the basement a few hours later after I uh, was doing my testing there. Uh, so a couple things about this boiler that I do like is one, it does have a mid-sized hopper that's going to come with it and it, it has an automatic auger. The pellet burner goes into the base here. And basically, it will feed through there and the ash is slowly going to come out there. I'll be doing another video later for an initial startup and kind of in-depth installation. And we can kind of see how that operates a little bit better. So if I leave that one open, you'll see, this is where you would do your main, your your manual burning. I uh, can't say that, that I would ever use that other than if we had no electric or gas for a long time, I, I do have this option here. Uh, I would still need to find something to circulate with, but I think the pumps run at about seven watts, so I could probably make that happen. Uh, there's a little tray that would go in here and it would allow you to lay down your logs. I might as well take a look in the last chamber. This, this is basically a cleaning point and this is where your heat exchanging is primarily happening. So you'll... Pull those out, give them a wipe. Not too much soot in here for actually using it. So it looks pretty promising. Another thing about the unit is it does read Celsius only, which is difficult to translate. Uh, it comes with a couple sensors, like the temperature of the water before it enters the boiler, the temperature of the water when it's exiting. And I'm not exactly sure how accurate that is. I do have a digital temperature gauge that came with my gas system. So I am able to see what the temperature is coming out of the boiler. And I do think that I'll eventually be getting my own manual gauge to go down by the pump to get that water temperature beforehand, simply for the fact that I won't have to convert it from Celsius. Uh, however, this unit allows for a lot of different applications. Uh, right now we're not running 
but it's able to control pumps. It's able to use a smart tank or keep your water heater up to temp and it, it can listen to your thermostat as well. Uh, it can be paired with other ones. It also can be linked to an app with your phone so you can see what's going on with your boiler. Uh, I do like those features, but for the most part, these things are going to do what they're supposed to do regardless if you're watching it or not. But I guess it'd be a nice peace of mind if you weren't around where it was operating. I don't think that I'll be leaving my on mine on full time, especially when I'm on vacation. But when the cold weather comes in, I'll have no problem sleeping with it or leaving it on over the weekend or even leaving for overnight or a few, you know, a few days. But I wouldn't want to leave it more than four days because you could run out of fuel. And uh, you just want to make sure that when it does go out, it, when it runs out of fuel, it could, it could make smoke, set your fire alarm, something like that off, something to scare you. But for the most part, not really concerned with that because I'll be around for the majority of the time that this thing's on. Um, any other things about the unit that I can think of offhand other than no, it fits. This is the smallest one. And so I think that I'll be able to get what I need out of it for about 4,500 square foot. Uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. So perhaps if it's a little cooler where you're at, you may want to get maybe one size larger. So that's pretty much it on the introduction and what I plan to use the unit for. Uh, there's certainly other ways to use it and I'll be glad to hear from anybody else that has a unit like this or similar. And take a look at some of my other videos. We're gonna take a look at how to initially set this unit up, how to initially fire this unit and give you some feedback on how it's working in my Radiant home and see maybe what it could do for yours. Thanks again for watching.